Once we've set our reference waveform, we can switch to lead from lead one to lead two. We set uh, the zero start interlock. And once you select, select the zero start interlock, it has a warning on here to say that you're removing a, uh, a safety feature. So now whenever you hit, when you press the button, it will automatically apply the voltage that you set your reference waveform at. So if you set it at 1500 volts, when you press lead two, you're going to get 1500 volts applied to this winding right away. We selected 2000 volts because you typically want to go to 500 volts per bar. Um, so as soon as we press lead two now, we will go to, we will apply 2000 volts to this automatically. So 2000 volts, hit lead two, and you'll notice this waveform lines right up on top of each other. Down here, the line to, EA, line to line EAR, L to L EAR, calculates the difference between one to two is a 2% difference. Move to my next set of four bars. Press lead two again. Waveform lines right up on top of each other. You'll see this change here in one second. Uh, it already reset itself. The next set of four bars is a 2% difference as well. Move my probe another four bars. Press lead two again. Waveform lines right up on top of each other again. Difference is 2% again. You'll notice down here, I'm not just moving one bar, I'm spanning another four bars. So I'm going to move my probe from here all the way over to here. Setting that, hit lead two again. Waveforms lining up. If this is a symmetrical uh, uh, winding, meaning that every, every four bars is exactly the same and there's no problems with the, uh, with the armature as far as shorts, opens, weak insulation, anything like that, all the way around this commutator, these waveforms should line up right on top of each other, probably have a difference of one to four percent, maybe something like that. Um, and as long as you get, re if, as long as you receive good waveform patterns like that, you have a good armature. Now if at some point you get um, some kind of a problem in here, then you're going to see these waveform patterns not line up. What I'm going to do to simulate that is I'm going to span across one extra bar and show you how this will show up differently. So now I'm going to go back to that same bar that I was on, but this time I'm going to be at five bars. So I'm going to press lead two again. And you'll see there's a major difference in that waveform pattern. The line to line EAR pattern down here is showing that there is a 37% difference. Now, to report this to your customers, you don't want to keep moving on with pressing lead two because as we as we the, the AWA has the capability when performing a span test to only store three waveform patterns the first is your reference the second one would probably be a failed waveform and then what we would probably want to do is switch leads one more time after this and switch from the red lead two to the red lead three, and then when we go to our next set of bars, I'm going to switch this back to only four bars so that we can simulate good bars again, or good readings again. Four bars, but this time, since we're on lead three, 
we're going to press lead 3. As we press lead 3, we'll get that waveform pattern on the screen. Nice and lined up. And now we've got a lead between 1 to 3 of 